Okay, this is a quick way to regulate a watch. So what I have here is the Seiko Bumblebee watch here. It's a bit dark so you can see the uh, screen. Uh, the program I'm using is called Tickle Print. And uh, it shows automatically, it shows the beats per minute right here. It shows the uh, plus or minus uh, so many seconds per day. And it shows the beat error here. And that's the uh, basically the uh, pallet fork going back and forth. If it's not centered between the, these two posts, then it's off just slightly and you'll get a beat error on it. And it shows the angle here, which is the, the actual rotation of the balance, which is um, 269 degrees. So anything between 230 and 310 is really good. So what you do is you take your watch. I usually take the watch back off, but you can do it. I just use my Bose uh, noise canceling headphones and they have a, a mic in there. Um, this is my simple way to jury rig it. I've got another way of doing it, but this is just to show you how to do it. So you just put that onto the back of the uh, back of the watch. And I typically, I normally have like a bean bag. There's a cheap bean bag you can buy at a dollar store. Throw the bean bag over the top, and that kind of isolates the mic with the with the watch, which is kind of a neat way of doing it. Then you just hit start, and the program detects the beat. And then you can see the plot. So right now it's get my tweezers out. It's saying that it's running 21 seconds per day fast. And I actually have been seeing it's running a little bit fast. So there's 31 seconds per day. And the beat error is 9.6. I'm going to let it settle down for a few seconds. And the, um, the balance is uh, swinging at 268 degrees, which is actually very good. And if you can see this at all, you can see the dots, the separation between the dots. You really want a solid line through here. Um, if the line isn't solid, that means you've got a pretty significant beat error. Let me see if I can zoom in here on this a little bit so you can see it. And if the dots, as it's plotting the, the, uh, the beats, if it's going in an upward direction, that means it's running fast. If it's going in a downward direction, it means it's running slow. So you want it to run kind of parallel. And you want the beat error to be pretty well null. Right now the beat error is 9.6 milli milliseconds, which is pretty high. But the watch is actually running at 10 seconds per day fast, which is actually pretty good. So what I would do with this watch is I would adjust the beat error first. And then I would adjust the... Um, the timing. So, so to adjust the beat on the watch, <clears throat> you have to take the back off the watch. I've loosened this watch, the back off of the Seiko diver a bit so I could just unscrew it. And this watch is a uh, 726 movement, so it's pretty, uh, pretty standard movement. This is the first time the back's been off of this watch. There you can see the uh, movement there. And I'm going to see if I can zoom in here, if this will zoom in for me, because I'll be able to point out how this is done. There we go. So you'll see there's two things here. There's a, um, a little regulator here, and it's basically... There's a single dot one, and there's a double dot. So the single dot one is the beat error. You end up moving that back and forth until the beat error is completely aligned. And then the double dot one, you see there there's a minus sign here and a plus sign here. And you just slightly, ever so slightly adjust that to the plus or the minus side, depending on you run it, whether you're running fast or slow. And once you've got it adjusted, then you've got to plug it back into the, uh, the timing device and determine whether it's uh, it's running fast or slow or not. So I'm going to just get a little bit closer here, if I can do that. And there. Oh, there's a good zoom there. So you can see, see if I can get a toothpick in here. There's one of the levers there, and the other one is is actually right here. 
these are the two levers. This one here is the one that you move to adjust the speed, or it's the tension on the uh, hairspring actually that you're adjusting. And again, this one here is you're adjusting the, uh, way, the, the way the pallet fork sits between the these two posts that are there to uh, your blocking posts to prevent the pallet fork from uh, going too far either left or right. And you want that pallet fork to be in the center of the two posts. And it's a trial and error thing to do that. And um, I've been successful doing it uh, you, on quite a few watches. This one here I've never adjusted before, so we're going to give it a shot and see what happens. So there you go. So now I've got the watch adjusted. So I'm going to lay the microphone on top of the open movement. I don't really like doing this, but I'm going to do it just to show you how this is done. I do have a better um, jig for doing this, and you can buy a professional uh, microphone um, or watch holding devices for this. I'm going to lay this microphone right on the top here, and I'm going to hit start. Did it again. I just laid the bead bag down on the watch there to uh, hold the movement in place. And now you can see I'm getting a bit of a, a gap. So the bead error is a bit better right now. It's actually excellent. But the watch is running 41 seconds a day slow now. So, as you can see, regulating a watch is a real challenge. You got to go back and forth until you get it right on the money. I didn't change the uh, the bead error on this watch. I just simply changed the speed. It's not picking up all the sound here because I'm talking while we're while I'm doing this, which is not advisable. So I just wanted to let you see how this works, but. Uh, Again, you can see that I've got 281 degrees here, which is a good swing, minus 51 seconds over here, uh, which is a bit slow, and 3 milliseconds, which is a hell of a lot better of a beat, uh, beat error on the watch. So I'm going to stop this and adjust it back again. But as you can see, I'm tracking really well here. One point one a beer minus thirty five seconds per day. So you could see there the beat error was just excellent on that last adjustment. And so I'll do one more one more adjustment here. I'll just put the camera down and show you what I'm doing. So, so that is running a little slow by 32, so I've got to speed it up. So what I end up having to do is push the uh, lever here ever so slightly. There, I just nudged it just a bit. It's almost an art to do this. And then you, uh, as I did before, I just lay the microphone down and see if it picks it up. It's leveling off at about 10 seconds per day, and I've got 0.7 millisecond error. I get this down to one second per day. Yeah. It's six seconds per day. And 
four seconds, three seconds per day, and 0.6 milliseconds of a uh, bead error. So this is really good. So it's, that's down to minus five, minus one. Um, so uh, I'm getting excellent results here and the watch is uh, basically regulated and I got one line on the uh, printout here as you can see it's jittering because I'm talking while I'm doing this but I got a solid line so which means the bead error is right on the money so I was able to completely regulate this movement and get it uh, well within the limits um, and so this uh, watch should run quite well so put it back together and that's it thank you very much